Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am back with a film review and then some other thoughts on some other stuff that I have watched because exams are over. So I can I can have other hobbies now, which is great. I can actually watch stuff again because I had to be really strict with myself. I think I said in my last video where I had to like really minimise like trying to start watching any new TV shows or anything like that so I wouldn't get distracted. So yeah, we, we are back in business. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is a film called Megan, which um, you have probably seen a trailer or some clip of because it went viral on social media. So I think it went viral on TikTok and on Twitter. Um, I think it went viral because it's the kind of um, premise of a movie which can be like quite gimmicky. So it's about a doll slash robot. So you've got like kind of something like visual that can be exploited in the marketing campaign. So I know they went, they went all out. Like I haven't heard about marketing like this for a long time, but they had like the do doll slash robots called Megan. And they had like all of like these like fake dress up Megan people um, at like various premieres and just turning up like in Times Square and other things. So very like good gimmick. Um, I think the doll, like Megan is quite unique looking in terms of like how they've like dressed her and stuff. Like it was in like a doll. She's not like unique, unique in that sense, but she's not like another horror movie doll we've seen like quite like this. Like she's not really an Annabelle or a Chucky. Um, and what I would say, she's less scary than Annabelle or Chucky. So if you want a film that's going to be really scary, this is not it. And if you're someone who doesn't normally like horror and find stuff scary, like you'll be fine watching this because it's not like at all scary. It's more like a drama slash thriller that's unfolding. There's not even really any jump scares or anything. So that would be my first kind of complaint um, in the sense that it's marketed as a horror movie about a doll. So you think it's going to be like super creepy and it's not. Um, having said that though, that's probably my only complaint because I think the rest of it was really, really entertaining. Um, I know that the reviews have been really good. It's got 95% on Rotten Tomatoes on the critics score and it's got 79% on the audience score, which I was quite surprised with actually, because I enjoyed it from an entertainment perspective. I watched it after an exam, so it was kind of what I needed. Um, but like I said, I was a bit disappointed it was marketed as a horror film and it's just, just not, in my personal opinion, it's not a horror film. Um, but secondly, like, I thought the writing was good, really good. So I think the elements that were really good about it, and there might be some spoilers here, so if anyone hasn't watched the film and doesn't want any spoilers, come back to this video at a later date. But, um, what kind of the underlying theme of this is, which I did enjoy that, and I thought that came across re really well in the writing, was actually about parenting. And, like, I'm not a parent, um, but... Like I am close to people who are and um, I'm on the fence about the whole parenting gig. And I feel like whoever wrote this movie either was a new parent or also on the fence. Um, Cause me and my friend that I watched it with, like we turned around to each other, she's also childless. Um, we turned around to each other and we were like, this is not selling it. <laughs> But I think that adds to the comedic value. So I don't think it was like a child hater that came up with this movie. I think it's just like tapping into some of that parenting psychology, like for laughs, which that was very clever in the writing. Um, and so essentially like, you're probably like, how does parenting link to an evil doll? Um, and that's a, that's a spoiler, but I'm sure I'm not really spoiling it because anyone that's seen the trailer would presume this is about some kind of evil doll um is that the doll isn't just a toy for the kid um the doll is also like an aid for the parents so it's almost like stuff that a parent is sometimes like too tired to do or there's just too it's just too repetitive and they can't be bothered like this this robot slash doll you know it's like built off of ai it can learn it can adapt to the kid that is the owner and it's kind of there as a support function for the parents but in this particular movie the main sort of female character um, played by Alison Williams, who was the girlfriend in Get Out and did an impeccable job in that film. And it's good in this, but Get Out is next level. Um, she plays like the aunt who has to, well, not adopt officially, but takes in her niece because her, her parents die in a tragic accident. She doesn't really know how to parent. She doesn't really want a parent. Like she's used to living on her own, all of this kind of stuff and finds it a real struggle. So she's already been building this prototype of this Megan doll slash robot, which is um, supposed to kind of 
help parents out. Um, so she decides to test it on her niece and then bad things happen. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, is anyone surprised that uh, the idea of uh, a robot that can learn and um, do its own thing is a bad idea? If anyone is surprised by that, watch this film, definitely. Um, so yeah, entertainment value, great. Story idea, great. Writing, great, but sketchy in some areas. And the bits that I thought were sketchy was that the film is kind of like clever in like I said, it's underlying theme and message. I think where it fell down in the writing was when they tried to insert comedy that wasn't derived from Megan herself. So when the comedy was derived from Megan, it was on point hilarious. That doll is hilarious. The actress who played her and the girl that voiced her did an amazing job. And I think the writing for Megan and like how she like her lines and how her facial expressions like you're probably like facial expression she's a robot watch the film it's creepy um in that sense um yeah great but when they try to insert other humor or insert tension for me it fell flat so i think my initial views when i came out of the cinema was that was entertaining but it a wasn't as good as i thought it was going to be b it wasn't that scary and then stuff that you see in the trailer doesn't really like mesh with the film so it's almost like they made the trailer first to get people interested and then they built the film around it and then therefore bits in the film just fell a bit flat so um a comparison to if you want something actually scary which has i think some tie-ins and some links to this movie but is actually scary and freaky and you think about it afterwards i would just go and watch the film orphan instead like Orphan or even the sequel, Orphan First Kill. Both of those I feel like are in the genre of horror movie that this was kind of linking into, but because they tried to like also make it like really humorous and I would say like a social commentary on parenting in modern life, it was almost like trying to do too much. So it actually went more in the kind of family drama, sending a message element rather than just being like flat out like creepy movie. So that is my review of Megan. Please do watch it because I would just love to hear what other people have to say about it and what their views are. So yeah, like I said, the critics and everyone are just like loving this. It's already been commissioned for a sequel, which I will go and see. Like I said, it was entertaining. But yeah, definitely not necessarily what I was expecting. And I think horror fans will be disappointed. But I think non-horror fans will really like it because like I said, you're not really that scared. So it's, it's completely manageable. So that was the first thing I wanted to talk about. The next thing I want to talk about is the TV show Dead to Me. So season three, I think, has been out for a couple of months. But as I said before, I've uh, had uh, exams, so I haven't really been able to get into anything. So I was kind of like knew that was on my list because I watched seasons one and two. I did want to watch the final season. Um, oh, my goodness, guys. Oh, my God. It was devastating. Like I was bawling my eyes out. I will say no more because I don't want to ruin it for anyone. But. A, anyone who's watched season one and two and hasn't watched this yet, you need to watch it. Like, you need to see how it concludes. B, though, don't watch it if you're in any kind of fragile emotional state because it's not good. It will make you worse. So, uh, yeah, definitely, like, save it for uh, an appropriate time. And Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini slay this film. Like, their acting is just next actual level like i think they're both fantastic christina applegate got diagnosed with ms while she was filming for this so you can kind of visibly see like some of the struggle that she's going through um as an actress on screen um but they managed to weave it into the story and just did such an excellent job and yeah i kind of like grew, not grew up with her because i didn't i used to kind of i've seen a few episodes of marriage with children but i remember her most when she played um the sister of Rachel and Friends in two episodes. I remember she won an Emmy for that. She was like absolutely hilarious. Um, and it's really interesting to see how her comedy has evolved because in this, like it's very dry humor, um, but so funny, like the writing and acting on this in terms of like the, the tragedy element, but also the dark comedy is just fantastic. So definitely give that a watch um that is everything that i want to talk about in this video so yeah just two recommendations there um and little mini reviews of them um i am tired <laughs> if you again if you can't tell in this video i think it's just been 
I don't know if like anyone else who's studying like knows what I'm talking about but it's just like your brain has been so focused so intensely on like very specific things um that you just have like fatigue before you start you have fatigue during it you have like to use so much adrenaline and energy in the exams that like once it's over you're just like oh my gosh like I'm so tired so yeah hopefully now I can get back to regular energy levels so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video